that you're in wireframe view by right clicking in the viewport and if necessary selecting wireframe view from the context menu. And now we can create a new collision object and position and size it so that it stretches across the breadth of the arch. This is the back of the arch here and the front of the steps is the front of the arch. And once you're happy with the position of that you can hit the F key to move into front view again ensuring that you are in wireframe view. And now we can use this block to begin to build the arch block by block. So we'll place this one in position on the top left hand side to form the first block of the arch. And then once that's in position we can copy and paste it using Control C and Control V move it across and rotate it to begin to build down the left hand side of the arch and again control C control V to put the third block into place and so you can continue down this left hand side building the arch block by block and of course once you have one side built it's a simple matter to copy and paste the entire set of blocks rotate them and place them on the right hand side here and that's what I'm going to continue to do now, build the entire arch and once that's complete we'll pick things up again. So now we've created the stairs, the landings and the arch. The next thing to do will be to create this banister but this is going to be slightly different because what we're going to be doing is placing a character at the top of the stairs here and having him stagger backwards and fall through this banister. Now this means that the banister needs to break and interact with both the character and the rest of the environment. So far we've been using passive collision objects to build the environment. Now while these have collision properties, they don't move under simulation. But we're going to be placing a character at the top of the stairs here and having him stagger backwards and fall through this banister. Because of this, we'll build the banister from mass objects, which do have inertial and collision properties and will interact under simulation. So let's begin by creating a cylindrical mass object, and there it is in the viewport and we can position this in exactly the same way as we would with any other object using the move, rotate and scale tools and I'm going to create this first upright on the left here at the top of the stairs and I'm going to rotate that I can do that either using the handle or by moving to its property view and in the X orientation field putting a value of 90 degrees and that will swing it through 90 degrees and make it upright now I want to scale this to make its radius a lot smaller a lot thinner and then scale it up so it's longer and I'm going to move it up and I don't want to rest it exactly on the top of this landing yet because with mass objects because they will simulate I can move into pose move select this mass object and because effectively when you're pose moving you're simulating I can now drop that down so that it collides with the top landing and sits exactly where I want it to. Now you'll notice that I've made these cylinders somewhat larger than the uprights and banisters on the template. That's really just for demonstration purposes. In production, you'd probably want to match the radius of these cylinders more closely to the radius of the template graphic banister in order to get more accurate collisions. Now I can just as before use Control C and Control V and move a copy of that upright across to the other side and again control C control V will give me another copy which will allow me to begin to create these crossbars I can rotate that once more moving to its property view I'm going to put a value of minus 90 degrees exactly in there and once more I can move into Pose move and drop that down so it sits exactly on the top of the upright. Control C, Control V allows me to copy and paste it, move it across to the other side. And there we have our banister. So let's just simulate and see what happens. And of course, because these mass objects will simulate and interact, they fall down under gravity. To avoid that, let's create a constraint in the environment timeline by right clicking on that timeline and going to cons create constraint event. I'll have that start at frame 0 and drag it out to finish at about frame 500 for now. 
ensure by clicking select in its property view that you have those banister objects selected and now when we simulate the banister will stay in one piece now we can add a character to the scene so let's click on the add character button from the toolbar select standard simulation character and click OK and there he is so let's move him so he's approximately at the top of the stairs on that top landing move it a little bit further forward and across a little and just as with the banisters we can move into pose move this time select the character's character cube just between his feet there and that will select the entire character in pose move mode so again we are effectively simulating which means that we can move him down and he will collide with that collision object at the top there be exactly where we want him to be so now to get this character to stagger I'm going to right click in his timeline and create a force event this will give him a little push in the chest and then we'll right click again and create a behavior event which will start at frame zero change that behavior from the default arms windmill to a stagger 2.0. Now let's simulate and see what we get. Oh, the character staggers back and collides with the banister but then falls forward. But remember we want this banister to break and the character to fall through it. So if we now return to the point where the character makes contact with that banister, we can slide the extent of the constraint to finish at that point. So now let's pull back a little and simulate. And you can see that this time the character staggers back, breaks through the banister and falls to the floor. Now of course you could experiment by adding additional behaviours here. You could add perhaps a writhe in midair as he falls through the banister and possibly a body fetal or catch fall as he reaches the floor. So you can see that by using a combination of mass and collision objects you can build complex environments with which your character can interact.